Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and welcome to my session uh, where I'm going to be talking about Power BI user journeys. We are going to be focusing on the why today. My name is Mara, and for those of you that don't know me, you will still not know me by the end of the session because there is no time for introductions. It's only 20 minutes, so... <laughs> so, probably one of the first questions uh, or one of the questions that you have is, what do I need to know to build an effective reporting solution in Power BI. So probably if you work with Power BI, you have some ideas already on what you need to do to build an effective reporting solution. But for me, it's not just about data accuracy, performance, having the most amazing data model in the world. It's not just about that. It's not about just report design either. And my mic is falling, I think. Okay. It's not just about uh, report design either. It's not about making things look pretty. Even though I do talk a lot about making things look pretty, it's not just about that. And I have here uh, some hints for you. So I took these screenshots from some random articles that I read online, uh, and I think this should give you a, ve a very good hint on what I'm going to talk about today. As you know already, you, you know the title of the session, but anyway. Um, so data storytelling is a key skill for data-driven decision making. Then you have here some um, insights from Coursera where they say that the fast-growing digital skill of 2023 is data visualization. No surprise here, right? Uh, and also the fast-growing human skills of 2023, or probably soft skills, I would say, is storytelling. You also have other people here, this guy, or girl, I'm not sure by the name, to be honest. <laughs> Apparently, data science manage, manager at Netflix. He says, or she says, we need someone to be able to articulate the why behind the technical decisions. Storytelling skills would be another way to describe this capability. And ju don't just blurt out a bunch of technical jargon, but tell a story around why the business needs this data and what will happen if the business uses what you've built. So don't focus just on the technicalities of whatever you're building. Focus on uh, data storytelling, on the user, and the value that this reporting solution will bring to the business. So for me, it's about or building an, an effective reporting solution in Power BI or in any other tool, really, is about answering the right business questions effectively. And I underlined, and underlined effectively because I think this is an important wor word here. And I come up with this process. And this process is very focused on report design because for those of you that, don't, that know me already, you know I talk a lot about report design, user experience, and all of that. Um, and this is kind of something I came up with uh, during my uh, years of experience working with Power BI. And again, it's focused on report design. But I think it's, it's a, um, a good starting point here. So step one, to build an effective reporting solution in Power BI. You have the requirements gathering, right? Sorry, this is always falling <laughs> for some reason. Um, you have to, to gather your requirements. And this is going to be the foundation to make sure that everything that you're building brings value to the business, right? Because you need to meet those requirements. Also, you need to know the principles of report design in UX. Um, it doesn't, it, it's not enough to just gather the requirements. You need to know kind of the basics of, on how to build a good design in terms of the look and feel, in terms of the user experience. That's also important, right? But this is more like the theory of everything. And it's not just about the theory because you're using a tool. And that's where the tool comes in. In this case, Power BI. And to build something effective in Power BI, you need to know also the tech. And it's not enough to know just the requirements. It's not enough to know just the principles of report design, user experience. You need to know how to play with the tech, basically. And then you need to design your layout. You need to design for action and interaction. So today, I want to focus on requirements gathering, because this is where user journeys fit. And I want to start by uh, saying that in terms of requirements gathering, I'm pretty sure, and I've seen this a lot, <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that is one thing 
that you're probably getting wrong when you're doing your requirements gathering for your reporting solutions in Power BI, or again, it goes really for any reporting or BI tool. So, story time now. Imagine this scenario. This is your boss or manager, whatever you want to call it. Uh, let's automate our reporting. Let's use Power BI and build our sales report in Power BI. So far, so good, right? But then comes the requirements gathering session. And then you're like asking probably, what do you want? And then you're, you're getting this answer, which is, it's not that simple or I don't know, right? How many of you got this question? I mean, I got this question loads of, or, or this answer loads of times. Like, I was asking, what do you want? And my stakeholders were like, hey, yeah, uh, it's not that simple. I don't know. Just build me something and I will think about it later. Or this. They, they tell you, give me everything. Like that big, chunky, huge table. Everything. I want a big table just like in Excel. How many of you? I uh, heard this too, probably a lot of you, <laughs> exactly. So then by the end of this conversation, you probably look like this guy and you're thinking, what am I going to do with this? I have no idea what, how, what am I going to do with this reporting solution? What am I going to put in my report? What type of charts, what type of insights? I'm totally lost because 99% of, of the times, you will get one of those two answers. Either I want everything or I don't know what I want. So, here is what you're getting wrong. You're asking the wrong question. And what you should be asking instead is why. So, in this scenario, when this person or the, the boss or the stakeholder comes to you and asks you, uh, can you build me a report or a sales report? Probably a lot of you, and I did this too, and sometimes I, I still do it, I forget about it, uh, but a lot of you probably ask, okay, what, what do you want in the report? That's not the right question. The right question is, why? Like, when someone comes to you and say, I want this report, and you're like, why? Why do you want this report? What purpose is it serving? Is it improving a process? Is it saving time? Is it saving money? Is it gathering more customers? What do you want to do with this report? There needs to be a reason on why we are building a a report in Power BI, wasting time, resources, and all of that. Like, we need to know the why behind this technical decision. So, the idea here is focus on the why and not on the what. Don't ask what people uh, want or ask why they want it. Because this will be a lot, uh, a, a lot easier for you to understand what exactly do you need to put in that report to fulfill those business requirements. So, I know that uh, for a lot of you, this sounds easier said than done. <laughs> I know that. That's why I want to talk to you about user journeys today. So, user journeys, I, it's, this is not a new concept. It's quite new probably in the, in the world of reporting. At least I didn't see a lot of people talking about this. But I, I found out about user journeys when I was reading a book on mobile apps and web design, I think. And they use this concept a lot in like user experience applied to web design and um, mobile apps design. So these user journeys, basically, they are used to guide the business stakeholders on the requirements gathering process. They are also used to foster a user-centric mentality. Because here you're putting the user in, at the center of the report development process. And also it helps you uncover blind spots that if you keep asking what do you want, you'll probably never find these blind spots because usually people know exactly what they want, but they, they, they don't know what they need, which usually are very different things. So this will basically help you understand why a lot better uh, if you use user journeys. So what are user journeys exactly? I'm here rambling about like store random stories and all of that, but what are user journeys? So imagine that you're in point A and you want to go to point B. But for example, I came from London to Wales. I didn't just magically show up here. I did a journey to get here. And this is what we want to do in terms of our reporting solution too. We want to understand what is the journey that our users will take when they are using our report. So in terms of uh, reporting, 
this uh, is what the user journeys would look like in very simplistic terms, of course. So the point A is going to be your report, like the moment you open your report. And then point B, like your destination, is going to be the actions or the data-driven decisions that you are going to take based on the insights that you have in your report. And here, in the insights, you have the journey. So you will take, your users will take a journey so that they can make a decision in the end. When they leave that report, they will probably, or they should take a decision, maybe not, it depends. We will see an example of that. Um, but they should be taking any, uh, uh, some actions or decisions, or that report should be driving something, right? Um, so how do I define these user journeys? OK, so step one, define the user journey scope, and then start mapping those user journeys. And I want to say that this is usually a lot of work. So I, uh, probably a lot of you will be like, hey, this is a lot of work. And uh, of course, you, you'll not be doing this for every single reporting solution <laughs> that you developed. But the most complex ones and the ones that have the potential to have the biggest impact in the business, for sure, I would do the user journey. Or I will try to understand what um, journeys are my users are going to take when they open the report. So in terms of the user journey scope, you need to understand what are the business goals with this report? What are the actions, again, or the decisions that they will take once they leave this report? Once they, to, they saw whatever they needed to see in the report, and now some actions come from that, right? You also need to understand the persona type that are, is going to use the report, because a CEO is going to be very different from an analyst, the type of insights that they want to see. And that is also going to influence the report type that you have, or that you are going to be building. And then map that user journey. Use something like MindMap or, Mind Map or Miro, which is the tool that I use, actually, this one. So in this case, I use Miro. This is a very simple example. Um, but here, in the corner, I've put in my business goals. So my business goal is to track sales against target. And then the action, or to make sure that the sales are on target, probably, that's better. And the action that this is going to drive, it doesn't need to be something very specific. But again, this is more to guide the conversation. It's not for you to follow this to the T. It's again, it's a helper. It's, it's to guide the conversations around requirements gathering. The actions, for example, I want to define an action plan for the stores and the products that have low sales. So you are taking a decision at the end. You, do, you don't have a report just to look at the numbers. I mean, you, you should be doing something with those numbers, right? And, and then we also have the persona, the analyst and the analytical is the report type. So your business goal again is to make sure that your sales are on target. Your actions is to find some kind of plan for the products that have low sales, that are not on target, or um, the stores that are not on target. So what happens now in the middle? So the best way to understand the business goals in this case and the actions is to focus on the why instead of the what, which is what I've been talking about so far. So one of the questions that I probably ask like right in the beginning is, uh, what's the first thing that you will look at when you open the report? I don't ask, what do you want in the report? I ask, if you had everything, <laughs> like that uh, kind of uh, GIF, what's the first thing that you will look at? Because I, I have a lot of customers that come like, the, the, you know, the Excel type of report. I had this in Excel and I just want the exact same thing in Power BI. OK, so open the Excel report and tell me what's the first thing you look at. Because you have usually a huge table. And I'm pretty sure you don't just look at the table. You probably look at one particular column first. And then from there, if something looks right or wrong, then you, you move to the next kind of decision, which is, OK, I'm going to look at something else now. So. This is kind of the way that you try to understand that journey. So also, some other question, or, or another question that I ask is, why is this the first thing that you will look at? So if you say, if you say, if you say I'm going to look at uh, yeah, the column sales versus target, I'm going, yeah, it makes sense. But why do you look at that particular column in this case? Because that helps you, basically, uncover those blind spots. Because here, again, you're not focused on what they want or what the stakeholders want. You fo you're focusing on the why they want it in the first place. So here, you end up with something like this. You have your goal here, and then you have the uh, sales versus target. They told you, ah, I want to see the sales versus target. And you quickly realize, OK, this is the most important thing of the report. 
Eh, makes sense, right, based on the business goal. But it's, it's still important to have these conversations. And then they also tell you, I want to see sales over time. And they're like, yeah, makes sense. But, what, but then you need to try to figure out that journey. What, what, what is the next step? on the decision-making process, basically, when they open the report and when they're analyzing the insights that you have in the report. So you ask, okay, now that you have the sales versus target, what if the sales are not on target? What, what would be the next thing, your next step? What, what would be the next insight that you would want to look at? And then again, okay, you can tell me something like, check which, it's very small, the text, <laughs> check which countries are not on target. So if the sales, if the big sales KPI kind of target um, uh, is red in a way, then I want to check which countries are not on target, basically, which again makes sense. But then I'm like, okay, so, and what do you do next? Now that you know which, which countries are not on target or have low sales, what's the next thing that you will want to look at? And also, again, don't forget the why. Why would you see this next insight? So it could be something like, check which stores are performing worse, or check which products, product categories are performing worse. So you're kind of figuring out that journey, like from the moment the person, the user, opens the report until they kind of have the, all the information they need. And this, of course, depends on the data you have available also. But in this way, again, you are figuring out the journey that they will take from the moment they open the report until they leave that report. And then you keep asking, what's next and why? Why do you want to see this? Why do you want to see X, Y, and Z? Until you get to the kind of final um, decision point in a way. So you have all the information you need to make your data-driven decisions. Then you have, um, or you can create your action plan for the sales that are not on target, for example. But then, how would you know all of this? Probably if you asked your uh, end user or your stakeholders just what do you want, you would probably not figure out all of this. You would have a lot of stuff that wouldn't be part of the report, but by focusing on, okay, why do you want this? Like, what's the, your line of thought in a way? Like, what are you thinking? What's the next thing that you want to see? What, what do you need to make your data-driven decisions, basically? So, in a way, the user journeys allow you to be more strategic when you're building your reports. Also, they allow you to focus on the value that this report is actually going to bring to the business. Again, you're not focusing on what people want, you're focusing on what the business needs. And also, you are making sure that your report is answering the right business questions and in the most effective way because you know exactly kind of the line of, of or the process that the user is going through when they open that report. You make sure that you have like all the answers that they need are right there because you know the journey that they will take. And I know this probably is a bit more complex and one report will not just have one journey, of course. <laughs> and like I said, it's more like a guidance, not something that you definitely have to have everything like written down in your mind map. It's not about that. It's about again, uncovering blind spots, making sure that whatever you're doing is what the business needs and not what the stakeholders want, because again, usually they are very two different things. <laughs> and this is all I had to say about user journeys. I think this is time, right? Just on time, okay. <laughs> uh, and again, thank you so much, and I will take any questions if you have any questions. Thank you.